Well, bless his holy name. Well, all right. I got to say, I am excited because we are at the end of Jonah. We're wrapping Jonah up tonight. It has been an amazing journey. If you have not gone back to the very first part, the very intro to Jonah, please do so. You will find that this series has just had everything in it that we need. And then, you know what I mean? Coming to the culmination, we're dealing with, and I was like, Lord, how do you want to end this tonight? What do you want me to say to the people? How do we, how do we wrap up these last four verses with Jonah just straight up acting, just, uh, just, he's just a whole mess. And, and the spirit of God sent these thoughts up into my heart. And I'm going to title this last message in Jonah, dealing with the unreasonable. Have you ever dealt with unreasonable people? Have you ever dealt with people that were just totally, I mean, that just would not listen to reason, that, that, that uncooperative, that, that just, you know what I mean? Obstinate, just, just, you just can't work with them. And, and they just choose to be that way. Well, we're gonna go ahead and look at how God dealt with unreasonable, uncooperative Jonah. And I tell you, Lord God, I hope you don't have to deal with a lot of people like that in your life. But if you do, we're going to take a lesson from God dealing with Jonah. So let's jump right on in. Uh, you know, I just want to say this here. When you're dealing with unreasonable people, basically, you know what I mean? You can put all of the facts in front of them. And the very moment they refuse the facts of any situation, then they're not using common sense. They're, they're on something else. And so let's look at God, how God dealt with Jonah being unreasonable, being uncooperative, and he had all of the facts in front of him. Let's watch God deal with the unreasonable. And let's see if we can pull off of God's experience with Jonah, okay, and deal with other people that we may come across in life that's unreasonable and try to use, and I'm not gonna say try, but, but employ the same principles and the same strategy that God used on Jonah. And unfortunately, you know what I mean? When you're dealing with unreasonable people, you can't force them to change. You can't force them to see and accept truth and accept the facts. So you just have to kind of plant those seeds. But enough of that, let me, let me not get ahead of myself. Let's go back to uh, Jonah chapter four, and uh, let's just do a little bit of preview, and then we're going to get right down to the nitty gritty, which is really coming down to dealing with verses 9, 10, and 11. And those are the last three verses. And again, we're going to see how this ends. And wow, what a, what a, what a, wow, what a piece of work Jonah was. Thank God for his obedience. But boy, his attitude was just, you know what I mean? It was shot. I, I don't know how else to say it. Jonah had a busted attitude. Okay. So now, watch this here. We got Jonah. Okay, he done, he, done, he done spoke the word of God. He done been used by God and he gives the Ninevites the message of God and he probably gave them an abbreviated message and they repented and they turned from their wickedness. They turned from Satan and they turned to God. Now that should have made Jonah very, very happy. Let me just say this here. Let me just interject this real quick. Whenever you obey God and you do an assignment, you fulfill uh, 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 an instruction from God that that you really don't want to fulfill that instruction. You got to rise to the higher level and see the best good. See how God's mercy and God's grace and God's graciousness touches other people. And whether you think that those people should be punished, whether you think that those people should even be dead, you know what I mean? If God chooses to show mercy, then we ought to just rejoice. And here's the reason why. Not so much for the fact that, you know what I mean? you know, we're mature enough to say, you know what, it, it is just good that God was able to show mercy and the people accepted the mercy. But you got to understand something, when people repent from being as horrible as the Ninevites, when you get people to repent, they're not going to be any more problem for you. They're not going to be any more problem to you. They're not going to be doing those wicked and negative and, and hateful and hurtful things to you. They're not going to be doing evil to you. They're not going to be manifesting evil in your life. And so when you're dealing with people that's being and doing and manifesting evil, you know, you listening to the devil, or you know that, 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 you know what I mean? You should be 
you should be dealt with or more severe than you, than you are. You're getting a break right now. And God uses you to bring that mercy, to bring that knowledge of mercy. You know, don't be like Jonah. No, be glad that them Ninevites have been turned, that them Ninevites have come to God. Be glad that those folks in your life that are unreasonable, that they're coming to God, that they're, they've just been absolute evil. They're coming to God. And that's the thing. We, we got to get them to God. We need to hear what God's got to say about it. And we need to hear the message that God needs to get to them and that God knows they will hear. And now to be in that position, to bring that message, to bring that word of encouragement, to bring that word of rebuke, to bring that word of judgment, you know what I mean? To be used by God in any capacity is just awesome. It's just amazing. So now we look at Jonah. There's a lot of things that Jonah should have been grateful for, but he wasn't. So now here he, he preaches the message to the Ninevites and the Ninevites repent. They come to God. The whole nation is spared the judgment of God. Now watch. Jonah now, he's not happy about this here. Jonah chapter four, verses one, all the way down to nine. Jonah is not happy, but God is still working with Jonah because yes, okay, you fulfilled my will. This is what God is saying to Jonah. You've done what I asked you to do, but you did it with a bad attitude. So God's gonna always bless us when we obey. Even if we have a bad attitude, God's gonna still try to bless us and try to change our attitude. You know, sometimes, I mean, I don't like to be unreasonable to God and unreasonable with God. But when I get into those moments when God asks me to do something and I get a little bit of unreasonableness going on, I repent quick. I don't want to be like Jonah. You don't want to be like Jonah. You don't want to get unreasonable to God and unreasonable, you know, I mean, as you're working for God. So um, God is now, you know, dealing with Jonah. Jonah then preached the message of God. The people of Nineveh done repented. But Jonah goes out the city and he pitches up against the city and he wants these people to die. He's hoping that they will disobey God and catch judgment. We don't want to be like that. So Jonah's sitting out there and he in the hot, 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 hot sun and, and, and he being beat down. That sun is beating him down. God turns around and causes a gourd to grow to give Jonah some comfort. Then God turns around and sends an east wind to cool Jonah down. Now it's hot out there in that sun. And Jonah is just, just unreasonable. He is just, he wants to see the Ninevites die. And God is like, I want to see the Ninevites live. And so we have to come to a place where we say, okay, God, not my will be done. Your will be done. Jonah hadn't gotten to that point to where he was like, you know what? Let me see the good in the midst of this situation. And, and in every situation that we deal with, there is going to be some good. God is an expert at taking what the devil meant for bad and turn it into good. I'm telling you. And in Romans chapter 8, it says all things work together for the good to them that are called according to the purpose of God. But we have to stay connected to God. We got to stay in sync with God. And, and, and when God's ways and God's love and God's grace is way above our, our innate desire for other people sometimes you know what i mean you 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 be like oh they deserve they deserve a beat down but then when god come in and say no nah, they need mercy give them one more shot and then when we give them that shot okay let's let's deal with Jonah. all right we ain't going i'm not going to go too far off on a tangent but glory to god we we we're, we're right now we're dealing with you know Jonah is angry he wants to die god's trying to comfort him god's trying to bless him and Jonah is just being unreasonable. So now here we're going to drop and we're going to go ahead and look at verse seven. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd. Now watch this here. God doesn't like, first of all, God was giving comfort to Jonah, but Jonah wouldn't change. Jonah stayed unreasonable. He, he, he just would not cooperate. You know what I mean? And God's like, look, I got blessings stored up for you. But if you keep throwing all of this unreasonableness, you keep wanting to die and you keep wanting judgment to come on these Ninevites, you're going to hold up your blessing. Hey, there is nobody worth holding up your blessing. You know what I mean? You just got to, you deal with unreasonable people. You know what I mean? Do what, do like God, try to work with them and then watch God. Now, verse seven, God, God is like, kind of like, okay, Jonah, I done tried to work with you. I done done everything I can except break your will 
to get you to see my way is better than your way. My love is better than your hatred right now. M my mercy and grace for these Ninevites, okay, is necessary because if we can get them on the right side, then all is good. Now we just got to get them on the right side and God got them on the right side. Jonah should be happy. So now, now Jonah's waiting for them to die. He's out there in this sweltering heat and God prepares this gourd to come up and, and comfort him. Now God can't force him. He's not going to force Jonah to change. You and I are not going to force unreasonable people to become reasonable. That, that, you know what I mean? That, that God doesn't do it like that. So here, here now, uh, after verse seven, now God says, okay, the gourd should have been enough to make you say, okay, you know what, God, I'm out of order. Jonah should have said, I'm out of order. God, you good to me. You still being good to me, you know? And, 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 and let me just show you some reasonable. Let me just show you some cooperation, okay? Honestly, I did not want the Ninevites to, to, to be saved and to catch mercy. But you know what? Now that they have, I want to be a part of helping them grow and to become better people. We got them in the right direction. Now let's teach them how to be better people. When you're dealing with unreasonable folks, and if you can get them to change, if you can reason with them and get them to change, and then be able to, to, to see the finished product, that's going to make you feel great, even though they may have been some Ninevites. All right. So look at this here. And it came to pass when the sun did rise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. God sent that wind to cool him off, to refresh him. That sun was beating him down. Look at verse nine. And then God said to Jonah, now Jonah, watch this here. Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. What is God trying to do? God trying to get Jonah to see common sense. God trying to reason with Jonah. Hey, there's going to be times in our lives that we're going to have to try to reason with folks. Let's look at God and how God did it. First thing God does, he hits them with some facts. He says, all right, first of all, he gives them a question. And the, the number one way to deal with unreasonable people is to start asking them questions about what's going on in their circumstance and situation, especially when they are the reason and the cause of ungratefulness when they're the reason and cause of problems, they're creating the conflict. So God says, do you, do you have a, a, a reason to be angry at the gourd? So now, so now watch this here. You dealing with unreasonable people, try to figure out why, why, why are you being so unreasonable? Why are you so angry? And sometimes unreasonable people don't realize that they're manifesting anger as well as disappointment. They're, they're manifesting all kinds of stuff, hurt. It may be deep seated. It be, you know what I mean? It may be from something that happened months ago, years ago, you know, and, 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 and when you're trying to get them to become reasonable, first of all, you're not going to force them. You just got to try to, you know what I mean? Present some facts in the situation that, that, that hopefully they'll be willing to look at it and say, okay, you know what? I, I shouldn't even be unreasonable here. I should be grateful. Okay, look at how God deals with Jonah. Look at this here. So, so then uh, God says in verse 10, then said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the gourd. So you have to go to people that are unreasonable and say, well, look, you know what I mean? You have the capability to perform better. You have the capability to show gratefulness or thanksgiving or mercy or self-control. See, if they have it within themselves to be able to perform better, you have to recognize their ability to perform better. And you got to be able to recognize when they have maybe in other instances done what was necessary in those instances that may have brought pleasure to them. Right now, that's because they was willing to do that. But when they have to do something that they're unwilling to do, you got to show them that they have the capability of being able to perform, to being able to be reasonable. So when they're being unreasonable, yeah, you got to you got to kind of come at them and say, you know, um, um, do you do you do you have a right 
to be unreasonable in this situation? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you have the capability of being reasonable. This is how you got this is where you started off with them. You know what I mean? You ask them a question. Hey, is it fair for you to be unreasonable right now? Because you do have the capability to see the big picture and be reasonable with this thing and change your ways. Right? Now, watch how God goes on and finish dealing with Jonah. This said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the gourd for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest thou grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. So watch this. All this is facts. So when you're dealing with unreasonable people and situations and circumstances, you need to know the facts. God just hit Jonah with the facts just on the gourd. Jonah says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I, I am angry to the point of death. And I ain't happy about what happened to the gourd. This worm done come up and, and, and ate my gourd. This thing was giving me comfort. You see, when, when we get into an unreasonable place, let me switch gears on you. If you ever got into an unreasonable place with God, an unreasonable place in a situation to where you were just being unreasonable and uncooperative and you knew to do better, you don't want to open the door to get your blessing tore up. You don't want to open up, here, here comes this gourd blessed, given to you by God and, and because of unreasonableness, because you don't like how the situation is going, and then you get unreasonable and you get uncooperative and you get rebellious and stubborn. And now you now you now you taking a chance of your blessing being devout. No, oh, that ain't nobody worth that one. There's no, you're not messing up my blessing. Okay, so now God is telling you, you, you had pity on the gourd. Watch this, look at the facts. You, you can do you can do pity. You can show compassion. You can show mercy. Or if a person is unreasonable, you can be reasonable. Now watch this here. God goes on and says, you didn't even labor for the gourd. That's facts. Truth is going to be the only thing that you can leverage with an unreasonable person. They've got to see the truth of the situation, the truth that's caused them to become unreasonable and they've got to be shown in a loving way that their reasons for being unreasonable is not reasonable. It's making no sense. You're not operating in common sense right now. God says, you didn't even labor to grow this gourd. Now you have pity on the gourd and you angry now that the gourd is dead. It came up overnight, <clears throat> excuse me. It came up overnight and it perished overnight. And you didn't you didn't plant the seed to grow it. I did that. You didn't you didn't you didn't water it. I did that. And sometimes when you're dealing with unreasonable people, especially if you are in the position to where you've provided for them, and if you're not in that position where you've provided comfort for them, that you've provided relief for them, you know what I mean? You hate to have to throw that in their face, but you say God done blessed you and he used me to bring you comfort. To bring, to bring provision to you, to bring sustenance to you, and you're gonna be unreasonable right now? See, when you're dealing with unreasonable people, you hit them with the facts. You gotta be walking in love though, you know what I mean? But you can hit them with the facts and say, wait a minute, okay? You, you, you created this. Wait a minute, no, no, no. You keeping this going. Oh, yo, yo, no, no, wait a minute. You didn't even, you didn't invest nothing in this. Now you gonna be unreasonable? Now you, now you want the thing to fail? I don't know what the scenario is. I don't know what the situation you might be dealing with, but you got to look at that situation and be able to look at if you're dealing with unreasonable people, you're going to have to come at them and bring them some questions about the situation. You're going to have to pro pose some questions to, to get them to see that the way they responded, they gone overboard. They, they, they unreasonable right now. And they, they, can, they can choose not to be unreasonable. They can choose to be compliant and, and reasonable and joyful and, and powerful and, and full of wisdom. Yeah, watch God. Now watch God. God hits Jonah with, you got pity for the gourd. So you can have pity. When people, when people are unreasonable, and, and they're in a scenario where they've chosen a certain thinking uh, 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 process. They've chosen 
a certain thinking pattern. They've chosen to be stubborn. They've chosen to be lazy. They've just chosen. Okay, they're unreasonable. In other words, when you're dealing with people that won't listen to common sense, so you're gonna have to present the situation in so plain a fashion. You have to talk so clear. You have to bring so much facts that you can now label them, you're unreasonable. So God said, look, okay, you didn't labor to call the gourd to grow. You didn't do anything to water it, the plant, nothing. You have pity for it because it's dead. And now you angry. Look at this here, verse 11. Now watch how you got to now, like I said, when you're dealing with unreasonable people, unreasonable people okay it's kind of like king david now king david did some wild stuff okay so he had a guy one of his soldiers okay uriah was married to bathsheba okay and she was she was a hottie right so a whole bunch of stuff went down and 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 david slept with Bathsheba got her pregnant. He gonna call Uriah from the battlefield, try to get him to you know, stay home and cover up his tracks. But Uriah wouldn't do that, okay? So, so David got a mess on his hands, so he had Uriah killed, right? So now, years go on, now the baby died. But Bathsheba, you know, now Uriah is dead. David marries Bathsheba. Yo, David did some crazy stuff. So, so here, God, now here's my point though. Years go by. And so David ain't repented. He ain't, he ain't went to God. He, he now he, he'd been unreasonable in this situation. You know, he just, he just kind of put it under the rug. So God says, God know how to get, get, God sends Nathan the prophet. And Nathan the prophet goes to David. Now he know you go easy because David is the king and he can, you know, he's already unreasonable right now. And he already avoiding the situation right now. And he ain't he ain't doing it right. So God now want to get David squared away and get David to repent so that God can continue to bless. Now, God ain't happy with what David did. So God sends Nathan in there. Nathan the prophet goes, okay, King David, listen, I, I got to throw a scenario at you. Okay, there was a guy, okay, that had all the lambs, all the sheep, that he wanted. And this one guy had only one. And the guy that had all the sheep that he wanted, all the lambs that he wanted, went in and not only took the guy's lamb, he only had one, but he killed the guy. When David heard that story, David went bananas. Who is the guy? I'm going to kill him. Oh, David just went bananas because what was done was wrong. Nathan said, you the man. And when that level of truth hit David, it hit him in his heart and he repented to God. Now you say, well, what, what does that got to do with Jonah? What does that got to do with unreasonable people? God knew how to get to Jonah to where Jonah could see the truth clear as day. So watch God. God turns around. Now, after God, you know what I mean, kills the gourd, God turns around and he says, hey, you know, you had pity on the gourd, okay? But you ain't willing to change. So watch what God does. God says in verse 11, and should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, also much cattle? This is God reasoning with Jonah. This is the last one, Jonah. Okay, look, the gourd is dead. You didn't do nothing to raise the gourd. You didn't, you listen, you didn't do nothing. It's dead, but you had pity on it. Now here's God dealing with King David. Now David, David the king. And God says, look, let me, let me throw a scenario. And he gave David the scenario to try to get David reasonable again. And it's how God did it with Nathan and, and gave this situation. God turns around and he's using this gourd to get Jonah to become reasonable. Look, I gave you a gourd, it blessed you. And, 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 and you, you, you didn't do nothing for that. 
And then you had pity on the Gord, but you won't have pity on these people. God, I don't know how that hit Jonah's heart. I don't think it had the impact that the, the, the strategy that God used with, with Nathan on David, the strategy works. God's going to give you some strategy to deal with some of these unreasonable people in your life. Some unreasonable people at your job. He's going to give you some scenarios. He's going to give you some metaphors. He's going to give you some, you know what I mean? He's going to give you some, some, some stuff that'll get to them to get them to back to thinking with common sense. Now look at what God says. Just wait a minute. You have the capacity to perform. You have the capacity to show mercy, to have pity. But you had pity on the gourd. Why can't you choose to have pity on these Ninevites? Now watch God hit facts. Watch God throw some facts. And when you're dealing with unreasonable people, you got to have your facts lined up. Look at God. Fact number one. Why should I not spare Nineveh? I'm a God that spares people when they wilding out. I'm a merciful God. I'm a gracious God. I'm a God of kindness. You know this. Why can't you be reasonable here? Is your hate for the Ninevites that strong that you don't want me to be God towards them? You don't want me to be a loving God? You want me to be a God of judgment? That's coming. That's a time for that. But let's give them another shot. Look at this here. Cry unto that great city. So look at God putting facts. That's, none of us not some little Rudy Poop scrub city. This is, they the powerhouse. If we can get them saved, they can impact this whole region. That great city, we're on our more than six score thousand persons. There's a lot of folks here. God is trying to reason with Jonah, but Jonah, listen, Everybody in the kingdom, that's a lot of people. Jonah, that was serving Satan, they're now turned from their wickedness. They're serving me right now. They are help. They, 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 we can get them, and, 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 and we can get them to bring revival. Jonah's unreasonable. He don't want to listen to spiritual common sense. Oh, by the way, that word unreasonable means not guided by or based on good sense. Jonah, you're acting crazy right now. Your, your behavior, your behavior is not good sense. Your behavior is bad sense. You're not, you're not even acting in common sense right now. You're not reasonable right now. You're not being cooperative. So you know when, when we're not being reasonable and cooperative, we're being rebellious and disobedient. Okay, so watch this here. Six score thousand persons that, now watch this here. Look at the facts. God's giving them number facts that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand. These people is messed up. They need a blessing. Hey, we got some messed up people that we come in contact with. And, and, and we got the answer. God has given us the word. And God is wanting to use us. And sometimes we just got to tell some folk, y'all need to repent. Y'all need, need to cut that out. That, that is not working for you. What, what, you know what I mean? This You're better than this. And God is the only way that you're going to be able to tap into those type of resources supernaturally to make the changes in your life, the changes in your thinking, to bring you to that place, that preordained place of greatness that only God can bring you to. A amen. And see, God's going to use you to talk to some unreasonable folks, but you're going to put the wisdom of God on them. You're going to put some facts on them. You're going to start asking them some questions. And these questions are calculated questions. They're questions to get them to start thinking fair, thinking righteously, thinking mercifully. Oh, glory to God. Thinking reasonably, thinking graciously. Or in other words, thinking like God thinks, thinking like Jesus thinks, doing like Jesus thinks and does. That's what the world needs. I'm telling you, the world needs some, some godly reasoning. And so when you're dealing with, just to recap, I'm about to wrap this up, just to deal, when you're dealing with unreasonable folks, first thing, you got to have all your facts lined up. Because you're going to have to go in there and, and, and show them 
that they have the capacity to be reasonable. And then to start it off, you're gonna to have to ask them, real simple, why are you behaving like this? Why, why are you being unreasonable? This is not exhibiting good sense. So why, why are you doing this? Now, if you can get them to divulge why they acting like that, you now, you now got a good reason to, to work with them, to bring them to a place where they're reasonable. After you ask them some questions, you know what I mean? And you know what I mean? And you, 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 you kind of locate where they at and try to help them to locate themselves and why they doing what they doing. Now you look at them and say, well, it's proven you, you can perform better. You can do better. You have with Jonah's situation, Jonah had the capacity to show forth pity and compassion to the new, to the Ninevites. How does we know that? How do we know that? How did God know that? Well, God know everything, but how do we see that? Because he had pity and compassion on the gourd. So you got to now ask them, why, why, are you, why are you acting like this? And then you got to show them that they have the capacity to do better and act better. When they acting unreasonable, why are you being unreasonable right now? You have the capacity and the capabilities to be reasonable. Now, here are the facts. So God comes in there and he hits them with the facts. And God starts laying out the facts. The facts is true. You know, in the scenario when you're dealing with unreasonable people, the only thing that is going to help them, and, 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 and you just got to let them put the truth right in front of them. You just got to show them the truth. You got to speak the truth to them. Say, look, this is truth. I'm not trying to hurt you with this truth. I'm not, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm not saying with this truth, that you're a bad person, but I can say that you're being unreasonable. I can say that that you're you're not cooperating right now. I can say that right now you, you being a little rebellious right now. Okay, and that's not helping this situation. Look how God dealt with Jonah. So He says, "Okay, look. Okay, you have the capacity, but you're being unreasonable." Okay. And then God turns around, and, and I like how God does this here because God comes in there and starts just bringing all of these facts. Why you? Why are you? Why are you unreasonable? Why are you angry? Okay. Then then God calls them out. Says, "Wait a minute. You you have the capacity to, to be better and to do better. All right. And then God turns around and says, "Wait a minute. Okay. Let me let me let me let me lock this down. You have the capacity to be better to choose better. Okay." So why wouldn't you choose better? You got to ask them the question. You got you got to ask them the question. When you're dealing with reasonable people, if they choose to be unreasonable, you got to ask them, why would you choose to be unreasonable? Now King David could have after Nathan broke that story down for him and gave him that analogy, King David could have said after after Nathan said you the man. King David could have just went bananas and went ballistic and said, guards, get him. Slice him and dice him. Put him in a million pieces. Don't come in here and disrespect me. Come in here and call me out of my name. But David didn't. He chose to hear what God was saying through the prophet. He chose to listen to truth. He chose to repent. Now, Jonah, there's no evidence that Jonah did that. Because you look how this book ends. So you dealing with reasonable folks, once you ask them some questions, why are you acting like this here? And then once you show them that you got the capacity to be better, you can choose a different way. You don't have to be unreasonable with this thing here. You don't have to, be, you don't have, you don't have to help the devil. Then you start hitting them with some facts. Look, okay, here's some facts. I'm not trying to hurt you with these facts. Here's the facts, okay? Okay, first of all, one, two, three, four. Four facts right there. Now, with Jonah's case, he said, look, these Ninevites, first of all, they're a great city. They, they, they chose to serve Satan, and they acted like the devil. But I can fix them. I can help them. They're a great city. Wait a minute. There's a whole bunch of people. They need help. They need change. What is God trying to do? 
He's hitting them with facts to try to get them reasonable, try to get them to see good spiritual sense, good godly sense. And then God goes on. He says, I'm amazed. Says, Wait a minute. They can't discern. There's a lot of these folks. Let me tell you how backwards these people are. They can't discern their right hand from their left. They that mixed up spiritually. You got to have compassion on these people. You got to have mercy. In other words, God is saying, Jonah, don't be unreasonable. You have my mercy. You have my capacity. You have the understanding of who I am. It's in you. I need you to come up to my level and at least show forth compassion, some pity. You know you know how to do it. I hate to be real redundant. You know, I like to kind of drive it in. I'm about to wrap this up. But you can do it. You have pity on the gourd. Can't you just choose to be reasonable and have pity on these Ninevites? And see, and see for us, we, we, when we deal with some unreasonable people, we look at the strategy of God. God is he, he working with Jonah. And then, and then, and then he says, God, like, okay, these folks, they can't tell their left hand from their right hand. They, they are messed up spiritually. Jonah ain't budging. Jonah ain't changing. Jonah's like, I don't care. I don't care. I want to die. Yeah, I did the will. I did your will. They spared. I won't die. He's unreasonable. And watch this here. And God's last ditch effort to try to get Jonah to become reasonable. And God says, not only can they not, talking about the Ninevites, not only can they not discern between their right hand and their left hand, they, they, they're their ability to distinguish right from wrong, smart from dumb, is messed up. They, 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 without me, these folks is messed up. And then God says, these people messed up. Don't this register to you, Jonah? Can't you have a little pity on them? Jonah like, no, I want to die. I want them to die. And then God says, and also much cattle. God really trying to reason with Jonah. He brings the cattle in. Everything was going to get destroyed. God was going, God was going to do the Sodom and Gomorrah on Nineveh. Just burn the whole thing down. Just everything in it. God even cares about the cattle. God is saying, okay, how about the cattle, dude? So I don't know if Jonah, you know, mean like cattle, had a cow or some sheep or whatever. But God is reasoning with this cat. He, God is like down to the end of all of what he can do to reason with Jonah without forcing Jonah to change. And can I just say this here? I hate to be a pessimist and I'm not going to end it like this here, but there's some folk, they just won't change. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. There's some folk, they just going to choose to be unreasonable. And they're not, it's not like they possessed. They just choose to be unreasonable. God done hit Jonah with all of the facts. God done reasoned with Jonah. God done, you know what I mean? He done went logical with Jonah. He trying to get Jonah to crawl into their shoes. He trying to, he used the gourd to, to show Jonah, you got mercy, bro. You got, you got the ability to be compassionate. You can show pity. You show pity to a plant. How about a human? So God comes down there and reasons with Jonah with, with everything that is God reasoning with Jonah. And Jonah would not change. Because the book ends. What about the cattle, Jonah? <laughs> and it ends just like that. No response from Jonah. Well, it wouldn't have been a repenting response. It is just, but I don't care. I want them to die, and I want to die now because they live it. Hey, you're dealing with unreasonable people like that. At some point in time, you just have to say, you know what? There's, there's nothing that's going to change your mind. Save a near-death experience, and I'm not going to bring that to you. That's not, that's not my nature. I'm not doing that. So there are some people that you just got to just kind of, okay, I love you. But you're unreasonable and you choose to be unreasonable.
no one wants to be in that position. No one wants to come to that, that type of crossroad in their lives, dealing with whether it's family, whether it's, whether it's dealing with uh, friends, whether it's dealing with, you know what I mean, coworkers, you know what I mean? That's just unreasonable. They just want to do some stuff that you know, we can all get fired for this. We, this will shut the company down. You know, you dealing with people that are just unreasonable when it comes to them changing back to the proficient, the the victorious, the the absolute quality person that God has predestined them to be. And when you're dealing with that level of unreasonableness, based on this story, God just was like, okay, you don't want to listen. So I got to leave you the way you are. And some people just choose not to change for the better. And the hardest thing for those of us that try to get them to a reasonable state, that try to get them to a state that's better than what they're experiencing, sometimes the hardest thing that we'll have to do is just fall back and say, all right, I done did everything that I know to do. I can't force you. I'm not going to beat you down. You in the hands of God right now. I can't do nothing with you, but I'm not, I'm not going to do nothing with you. I can't do nothing with you and I'm not going to do nothing with you. So I'm not going to aid and abed that type of unreasonableness, that type of destructive behavior, that type of, that type of arrogant and obnoxious behavior, that type of rebellion. I am not, I am not supporting that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to release resources on that behavior. You're going to have to change. If you want my resources, if you want my help, if you want me in there, you're going to have to change. I cannot, I can't, I can't deal with you being unreasonable. You know, God, this story ends like that. And I, I was like, Lord, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Jonah, no. And we ain't heard nothing else from Jonah. But, but Jonah serves as an example because Jesus mentioned Jonah's situation multiple times. Yeah, multiple times. And Jonah, his situation, God says, okay, well, you know, Jonah, Jonah's doing what he's doing, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to capitalize on this here. And Jesus says to those guys, like Jonah was in the belly of the well three days, I, the son of man is going to be in the, in the belly of the earth for three days. So you got to understand something. God can use anything, anybody, no matter what condition, no matter what mental attitude, no matter what level of rebellion they, 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 that we've walked in, they've walked in. God says, I can use you to bring good. And that's what God wanted Jonah to get a revelation of. Jonah, I'm about to use you to bring revival to Nineveh. Hey, glory to God. Man, that's the greatest thing. If you can bring revival to somebody that's just messed up to cause them to, st to stand up again, cause them to rise up again, to cause them to be refreshed in their soul, cause them to see their potential, that's a good thing. That That's something that as Christians, we should all be reasonable before God to do for God. Okay, reasonable before God to do for God, for God. And, and that's work with some unreasonable people. We got to witness. We got to let folks, you know what I mean, know that God loves them. We, we got to ask them, hey, are you right with God yet? Have you made Jesus your Lord and Savior? We, we got we to, gotta, you, have you become reasonable with God? Or are you unreasonable? Refusing to, to believe, refusing to hear the word of God, refusing to obey the word of God. And, and, and we don't want to be like Jonah, especially in these, these last days where, you know what I mean, where God tells us, go and talk to this person. And we like, well, I, Lord, I don't like these people. That I, don't, I don't want to talk to them. No, we can't do that. That's not good. That's, that's not good for the kingdom. It's not good for us. It's not good for them. So I just say this here. Let's be reasonable with God. Let's be reasonable for God. And then most important, if you need that help, let's be reasonable through 
almighty God. And the benefits, oh my God, no, we're not going to shut down the blessings and the benefits because when we share the word with folks, when we can now get an unreasonable person to become reasonable and then serve God and then become a better person and perform better in everything that they do, oh, glory to God, and you and I are used by God to create that level of reasonability in a person? and they begin to glorify God, now ultimately God says, you have now helped that person to tap into their preordained, predestined, laid out plan that I had for their lives and ordained for their lives before they was born. Oh, glory to God. So it's just great to be on this side of destiny, to be on this side of predestination, and then to be able to help God, help people to come to their preordained victory and help them to make the wise choices because we furnished them with all of the facts and we asked them, hey, how about we choose being more reasonable with God? Glory to God. Well, my time is all gone. Hallelujah. We are done with Jonah. Glory to God. Listen, I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. If you enjoyed this series, share it with a friend, share it with family. Hey, go back. I just want to just challenge you and encourage you at the same time. Go back to the intros. Listen to this series again. There's just some, some really, really, really awesome nuggets that was that was shared. And I pray that, that what you've learned is going to be uh, one of the tools in your spiritual belt to help others get to know God better, and then to help Christians not do the Jonah, but to understand that God is an expert at taking all things and working them out for the good. And so all God mm -hmm. needs is some cooperation. All God needs is some reasonableness. And glory to God, we are supplying God with all the cooperation and all the reasonableness so that we can maintain that predestined, that victorious, that glorified walk before God, walk with God, that walk in God. So in the name of Jesus, come on, hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you for your blessing in our lives. We thank you and praise you, Lord God, for your, your hand working and, and moving and molding and cultivating and strengthening and building in our lives. And Lord God, build us so that we can now go to others and help them to see how awesome and magnificent of a gracious, compassionate, kind God that you are. And then Lord God, thank you for giving us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, your love, your compassion, your mercy to go and reach out to people. And then Lord God, no matter what state they're in, that they won't affect our ability to manifest your love, your compassion, your pity. And if we can do it in the simplest of things, we can do it in some of the hardest and most challenging of things with your help. And these things, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, God bless you. Until next time, hey, check out the description box. This bless you. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll keep awesome messages coming your way. And uh, pray for us as we pray for you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Shalom.